Oh, hey there. Hey guys, uh, Julian here. Uh, this is a follow-up video to my last uh, video, which was my first video, how to feed baby rhino rat snakes. And in that video, I talked about the different feeding personalities that I think baby rhino rat snakes have, and I showed a few different uh, techniques on how to feed them and a little bit of my philosophy on feeding. In that video, one of the techniques is what I'm calling the assist feed method, which is used on the feeding personality that just does not strike when you present the food. Uh, it doesn't even run away. It just does not open its mouth. So when you have the occasional baby like this, um, the assist feed method is where I like to go with it to um, get that baby started feeding. So the three personalities basically are, um, you know, you're going to have those babies that just come out snapping. Uh, those are the easiest ones to feed. You know, you hold up a little pinky piece, uh, it snaps it, maybe they're striking out of fear, that's okay. They snatch up some food, you wait them out, they start swallowing. The second personality is that um, they're a little, it's a, it's a baby that's a little more uh, timid. It might strike once or twice, but it has a tendency to flee quickly. And the third personality is the baby that just, uh, it's just too timid. It'll just um, sit in your hands. Uh, you could present the food. It has no interest. You could tease it a little. It has no uh, desire to strike. Maybe it's not confident enough to strike. I don't know what's going on in its mind, but they just don't strike. So with the assist feed method, you uh, give it a little bit of help uh, and you start this early on and over time they catch on and it's it's downhill from there. It's, it's something I used on all the rhino rat snake babies that I have with that personality. So in the last video, uh, basically I fed a whole clutch of uh, babies with you. We kind of went on like this half hour long uh, rhino, baby rhino rat snake feeding journey together. And this one is just going to be a highlight of the assist feed method because in the last video, there were two instances where I used that method. And, you know, it kind of took a little while uh, to focus. The quality was kind of... Uh, dog shit. So this video is a highlight of the assist feed method where I kind of just, you know, snapped a quick video. Don't expect some Andrew Lloyd Webber shit. This one is just going to be um, clear. There's not much more to say about that. Let's just jump right into feeding. Okay, so I'm picking up the baby rhino rat snake. I always feed them while holding them in my hand because of the tendency to flee. When you hold them in your hand, you have more control over the feeding process. If you try feeding them in the tub and they're fleeing, you can't really be successful feeding a snake that's trying to run away from the food. So right now, I'm kind of teasing the snake, rubbing it up on him a little bit, uh, on the mouth opening, tapping the horn. Uh, in this case, it might look like I'm a little bit uh, aggressive with the offering, with the teasing, but with... Um, these snakes from this particular clutch, I've been working with them for months. Uh, I know this snake and I know this snake uh, is particularly one who, uh, you know, is going to need the assist feed method. But I do, like I said, always give it the opportunity to strike because ultimately you want them feeding on their own. So as you can see, now I'm at a point where I gently restrain the snake behind its head, close to behind its head as possible. You don't need a lot of pressure. They're tiny babies. You have to be careful with this. Um, so they coil around your hand. They kind of secure themselves in there. And now uh, I kind of use light pressure against the mouth opening uh, if I'm not dropping thing. Um, and I'm using tongs now. Tongs are a little bit easier. They have their pros and cons but uh, we can talk about that later. Essentially, I'm just putting light pressure on the mouth opening. You can see that this one is uh, fighting a little bit, but there you go. Um, you just need a little bit of time uh, and you just need a slight open, close the gap, put the head in the mouth. As you can see, this one quickly uh, knows what to do. Once food is in his mouth, he starts chewing it down um, and is uh, looks pretty happy if you ask me. Sometimes when you first start off with this, they don't start chewing right away like this. So they might just hold the head in their mouth uh, and it might be sticking out 
enough that when you put this snake back, it'll take that opportunity to rub the uh, the protruding uh, pinky part against the wall of the enclosure and uh, manage to dislodge it from their mouth. Uh, one reason why I hold it, and I like to hold it until it's uh, swallowed a good distance, is uh, so that it does not um, have the opportunity to uh, lose the head. So now that it has it basically in its throat, I could put it back, it's gonna finish the swallowing process. And that's a, that's a fed snake right there for this week. Okay, snake number two. So again, I'm gonna uh, hold this animal in my hand with feeding. You can see this one looks a little bit, you know, off the bat, kind of uh, kind of timid. I know it's just hiding in its hide all comfortable and I'm disturbing him. But, um, you know, he's looking like, okay, you know, what's about to go down? So I hold him, present him with the head. Let's let it get it uh, back in focus here. I did promise you some outstanding video quality. Um, yeah, again, a little bit of pressure up against the mouth, maybe even try that move without restraining it because eventually the snake um, learns to use that sensation of uh, food against its mouth kind of as a cue for meal time. Eventually this method gets them to just open up off of light pressure against that opening and that's how you get them feeding on their own. So as you can see, uh, same thing, kind of tapping the, um, the horn and this one did attempt to flee right there. So now it's like, no, uh-uh, you're not going anywhere until, you know, you eat your peas and carrots, little one. So uh, same thing, restrain it behind the head gently. It's going to coil around me and lock itself in place. Um, and then we are going to offer the pinky head. So light pressure on the mouth opening. This one looks like it's a there you go it looks like it's a little more accepting just that little bit of mouth opening was enough to close the gap let it hold it uh see this if i were to put it back right away sometimes uh this sticking out this much they can use that opportunity to dislodge it but again like i said these snakes kind of know the deal um, they've been doing this for a while at this point. They're a little bit further on in their food training, quote unquote. Uh, once he has it in his mouth, he starts swallowing it. And yeah, he's, he's looking pretty happy to be eating. Uh, and eventually these guys will be eating on their own. No problemo. So as you can see, he quickly swallowed it down. You can put him right back and there's obviously no issue of him, uh, you know, losing that pinky head in any way. It's already in there. So there you have it, guys. Um, two babies fed. Uh, as you can see, the first snake was a little, uh, you know, fighting me a little bit, a little less accepting of the uh, pinky head being pressed against its mouth opening. Um, but, you know, just... Be a little bit persistent, gentle pressure, causes them to open their mouth, um, close that gap, they start chewing it down. As you can see in this video, once the head is in their mouth, both snakes start swallowing right away. These snakes are older and used to the process. Uh, when I first start with babies, um, whether they're like assist fed or even if they just strike and manage to catch a, a pinky piece, like a pinky leg or a tail or a head, off of a strike. Whether it's an assist feed or not, when they're younger, they tend to kind of sit there with food in their mouth. They tend to wait it out thinking, what can I do about this? You know, it seems like they're thinking like, when is this guy going to put me down so I can just rub this thing up against anything I could find and uh, dislodge it from my mouth. So in the beginning, you are standing there for some time, uh, you know, some longer than others, some not long at all, but waiting for them to swallow it, uh, waiting for them to, you know, have that piece of food inside their mouth um, deep enough so that you could put them uh, back inside the enclosure without um, them having that opportunity to dislodge it. But over time, you can see with these ones that are a little bit older, um, they start swallowing right away. The next step, as I was saying before, is basically uh, as they they you know become more comfortable with this process, they become more uh, comfortable with feeding in this way. Um, you know, 
just the sensation of the pinky head up against the mouth opening, it kind of becomes like a cue for mealtime, right? So it's uh, it's like a conditioned response, you know? At first they don't know what it means and you know, you can see you put a little bit of pressure on them. Um, but as you progress in feeding them, it gets to a point where you just touch the mouth opening and they even strike. And then it gets to a point where they just start striking on their own. But it does take time and it is a process. Um, you know, I have rhino rat snakes that are about seven or eight months old. And that's when they kind of start taking off tongs on their own, whether they're assist fed or not. So that's why I give them that opportunity to strike on their own because some of them tend to strike on their own sooner than eight months. So I like to get them to that point because like I said, you know, obviously, uh, inevitably, they have to be feeding on their own. You don't wanna be assist feeding a snake um, forever. And that's kind of the difference between, I would say assist feeding and force feeding, you know what I mean? Um, in this method, it might seem like you're doing a lot for the snake, but you aren't. You're just kind of conditioning this response. Uh, whereas force feeding, you know, I've never done it myself personally, but uh, you know, I've, I've read about it. I've seen pictures about it in books. Uh, I've heard people talk about it. I worked at a pet store a long, long time ago, and I think I've seen it done once or twice by people there, you know, all these, uh, you know, reptile people, they all have egos and think they know what they're doing. And, uh, you know, some people just think these things are like a tube of toothpaste. You could just put like something in there and just like, but <laughs> that's absolutely not the case. So, um, I definitely like this, uh, method because it is pretty gentle and it is allowing the snake to make that choice. Yes, you're putting in a position where it can't make any other choice, but when it comes down to, let's say, training animals, sometimes that's what you have to do to set them up for success. Uh, and that's just what I do with these guys. I know in these last two videos, it might seem I'm making a big deal about rhino rat snakes eating. Um, rhino rat snakes are not hard to feed. They're not hard to care for. They are, they've actually become my favorite species and they're super easy. The only challenging part in my opinion is just getting babies started. Once you get them to a certain age uh, as hatchlings, um, they take on their own and it's downhill from there. Um, so I see a lot of people using you know, scenting techniques or pairing it with a fish in a water bowl. Maybe you have a little guppy uh, and then a head in the, in the bowl and maybe it goes for the guppy and then eventually it goes for the head. And it's kind of like a conditioning process there as well. Eventually it gets the head enough times. It doesn't need it to be in the bowl anymore and you can just get the head off of tongs. Sure. Um, but then this is kind of the same thing too. Instead of pairing a fish with the head, I'm pairing the sensation with the head, pinky head in both cases. I just personally don't feed fish. Um, so they're not hard to keep at all. Um, it's just a little bit of a challenge getting the babies fed, whatever method you want to use, as long as you're successful, Hey, that's great. I mean, I hope these, uh, you know, this video, um, you know, can help somebody with, uh, you know, maybe struggling with, with feeding, you know, there's a few techniques in this video that maybe, um, aren't considered like holding the, the rhino rat snake in your hand when feeding it. You know, because on the forums, you know, the, the pages on Facebook, people, you know, help my baby rhino rat snake won't eat. And if you're offering a baby rhino rat snake um, a, a food item and it's running around the enclosure, you're not going to be successful like that. So if there's anything in here that helps, um, that's awesome. If you like what's happening here, please, you know, like below. If not, that's cool. And if you want to subscribe to me, uh, that would be awesome. But again, if not, that's cool. I hope it just helps somebody. And uh, if it did, you know, let me know. It's awesome. Some people have come back to me, let me know that it helped and, and that's great. I'm super happy. So I'm going to put out more videos like this. I have a, a bunch of rhino rat snakes. They're my main, uh, my main snake uh, right now. And if you want to see more, there will be more. So thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.